Hi everybody, Steve here in Palm Springs, California, and I'm in the neighborhood called Vista Las Palmas. And I'm here just a little bit early. I'm meeting my friend and fellow YouTuber, Scott from Toronto. You may know him from his YouTube channel, Scott on Tape. He does a lot of true crime videos on his channel. I don't do a lot, I do some. The house that we're coming to see today has such an interesting past. Not only is it famous for one of the most notorious crimes here in Palm Springs, but three different famous people have also lived here. And I'm especially interested in the last famous person who lived here, who was best friends with Rock Hudson. I also find it really interesting because when Scott told me about this house, I, I knew that the last resident lived here, but I never really paid attention to the address. And then when Scott told me that he wanted to come here today, I looked it up online and discovered that I was here, actually I parked right in front of the house the other day, I was here looking at the late singer Trini Lopez's home, which is now on the market. It's just a couple doors down from this house. And I was also here a couple weeks ago because just two blocks this way, or maybe three blocks, is the former home of actor and singer Dean Martin. So it's a, a real star-studded neighborhood. I, and I almost forgot the biggest star of all, just one block that way, is uh, Elvis Presley's honeymoon house. So it's a pretty uh, cool neighborhood. Neighborhood and to find out that one of the most infamous crimes here in Palm Springs took place right here in this house in this neighborhood was uh, pretty surprising and shocking. So Scott just arrived mm. and you can see he's emotionally unavailable. Emotionally and, and physically and mentally almost. Yeah, yeah, he had a pretty rough night last night. I was just telling everyone that um, this was your idea and you're going to probably do most of the talking and explain, you know, yeah. uh, the history of this house. I just looked it up in my book that I have of famous homes here in Palm Springs. And sure enough, it says that uh, three famous people or four famous people have lived here. Four no, famous? No, three famous people plus the crime that you were talking about oh, and right. the last person that we knew about. But there were two people before that. Did you know about them? I knew that Ed and Sophia Friendly had bought it from somebody. I wasn't sure who they bought it from. I don't know who that is. Are they famous? They're the ones that were murdered here. Oh, okay. So they're the ones that were murdered. Okay. Like we're walking up to the house now and it does look like it's been completely remodeled, doesn't it? Oh yeah. It's been extensively remodeled. Yeah. Well, let's see if there's any plaque. So this street here is Camino Sur. Well, what's going on everybody? How are you doing today? So here I am in Palm Springs, California. And I'm here with my good friend, Steve, who's filming as well. Memory Lane trips with Steve. Been in a few videos with me. And we are outside of not only a house owned by a famous actor and a few others, but a house where probably the most gruesome murder in Palm Springs ever, ever took place. It's because I find it fascinating who, who bought, after the murders took place, who bought this house and his connection to Hollywood. So Steve, who is George Nader? So George Nader was a writer and an actor. I think he started as an actor and actually became a very uh, well-known and very uh, successful author later in his career. But he was best friends with uh, Rock Hudson. Right. And they were friends their entire adult life. I've heard stories that they were, you know, in the beginning that they were partners or lovers, and I'm not sure if that's true because I've heard, you know, conflicting things about that, but they were definitely like best friends for their entire adult lives. And later, George Nader did have a boyfriend, a live-in boyfriend or partner. companion yeah. or partner, whatever. And I believe they lived here yeah. for almost until his death. Yeah, I believe till 2002. I actually visited their cenotaph at Forest Lawn in Cathedral City. It says uh, Rock Hudson, George Nader, and Mark Miller. Right. Mark Miller became Rock Hudson's secretary. Right. So he was his... Uh, secretary for at least 10 years maybe more and that's the connection that's how they all knew each other yeah and but they were the last owners i mean not the last owners obviously there were owners after that but yeah. as far as famous owners i don't know if anyone famous has Bought it lived since. here ever, since then but there were two other famous people who lived here okay so the first owner of this home which was built in 1961 was george arnold and he was famous because he was the owner and maybe the creator of rhythm on ice i don't know if you remember back in the 1960s probably 50s too the ice capades right. and all the famous you know ice skaters and stuff i think that all started back probably in the late 50s early yeah. 60s and so he was famous for that and he owned this house and then he sold it i believe it was 19 in 1977 to 
through Greg Sherwood. That's actually a woman's name. Greg was an actress, but she married Horace Dodge Jr., who was, I think, the uh, son of one of the owners of Dodge, of the Dodge right. automobile yeah. dynasty. And so in their divorce, she received, apparently received $11 million and proceeded to, to blow, run, it all. blow it all in, uh, you know, I probably should turn around and show you here, uh, to blow all that money on her, on just, you know. Uh, with, who did she blow it with? Yeah, right? with her bodyguard boyfriend. Isn't that always the case? Yeah. <laughs> bodyguard because the bodyguard will use his way. But hey, at least she had fun. I mean, it yeah. sounded like she must have had a lot of fun. Uh, that was the second famous person who lived here. So a year after she sold this house, the people who moved in here, right. they were involved in this crime that Scott's going to tell you about because I don't know, I didn't even realize there'd been a crime here. And then after that had happened... George Nader bought it, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. assuming that he knew that there had been... No, a, he did not. Oh, oh that's he, part of the story? Yeah, the oh. realtor did not tell him. Okay, so let's start over. Here we go. Here's the house. So, a couple named Ed and Sophia Friendly bought this house from, I'm assuming from Greg Sherwood, the actor, all right, or, their, or Dodge bought this house. So Sophia, before she was married to Ed, who was a wealthy man himself, she was married to Curtis Hutton, who was a cousin of Barbara Hutton, famous socialite. Mm -hmm. Barbara Hutton had a trust set up for her family members and he was going to get $1 million. So Sophia had it in, her, uh, she rearranged the trust that said, if anything happens to Curtis, her husband at the time, if anything happened to him, the trust goes to her right away her then her kids no one else in the family of the Hutton family she wanted it all to go to herself now she had two kids with uh, Curtis and I believe she may have had another child with Ed it's not, I'm not sure but she had Edward is the name you want to remember Ed friendly that she had another son now what happened was in 1978 somebody came to this house Sophia answered the door spoke to him for a little bit then he shot her dead right in the front door, right in the front hallway there. Wow. He proceeded to go into the kitchen. He shot the maid, Frances Williams, who got on her knees, I'm guessing to pray, and then he assassinated her. Then he went into the back room and he killed Ed. Ed was hard of hearing. He probably didn't even know that somebody was in the house shooting. He was almost deaf. That sounds like a hit, like uh, exactly. a hit was put out on mine. That's exactly it. But who was the hit put out on? who did it yeah it's never been solved but pretty much what is what is assumed is because Curtis was close to death he was very close to death the son Edward had a friend that he met in Europe and the, the oh and when the assassin left the house he put a fedora over the face of Sophie so that's a sign that's that's a hit sign and that's showing that that that's a, I was reading extensively, but that shows that that victim is the one that was intended. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, Ed had this friend, and, it, and pretty much, um, what do you call it, not just the FBI, but the Interpol, get, gathered that this friend was hired by the son because he knew his father was about to die, and but he wanted his mother dead too, because he wanted to get all the money and split it between him and his sister. So it was never proven. It was alleged, but it's still unsolved to this day that that is what it, is. it was. A, an assassin hired by the son, her son to do it and killed all three of them in here. But really tragic is the maid, Frances Williams, was just there. Yeah, she was a bystander. And Frances Williams, it kind of, for, for, like it's a triple assassination, you know, and everybody knew about the friendlies. They were a very powerful couple. Everybody knew about the connection to the Hutton family. But this woman was just here yeah. doing her job and She's now. What was their connection? The friendliest connection to the Hutton, to Barbara Hutton so again? Sophia, the wife who was murdered yeah. first here in the front, yeah. front foyer, right, right here. Yeah. She she was married to Curtis, which was Barbara Hutton's first cousin, and Barbara Hutton had set up trust funds for all of her different family members. So the son knew that that million dollars, if he got rid of his mom and his father happened to pass away because he was on his deathbed and it worked out perfectly for him yeah. because the father did pass, uh, Curtis passed away I think a week later Wow. and he inherited, him and his sister inherited the money. So it was all for money. How sad. It usually is, right? You know, like you look at all these yeah, houses. Passion or love or sex or money. Always. Why this house was chosen and nothing was stolen, nothing was ransacked. So you automatically as an investigator, I think it has to be connected to 
his business dealings, the, the husband has to be connected to the wife. And of course, all this is alleged because I'm guessing all this he's is still alleged. alive, right? The son must still be alive. Right. Yes. Surprisingly, I haven't been able to find online any information about the final resting places of Ed and Sophia Friendly. And sadly, the housekeeper, Frances Williams, was buried in an unmarked grave at Desert Memorial Park in Cathedral City. Even though I've lived here in Palm Springs all these years, I never knew that George Nader's former home had such a past. But thanks, Scott, for suggesting this trip. And this week, I also want to thank my newest Patreon supporter, T.R. Thanks, T.R. Your donation to this channel means a lot. Until next time, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.